Hello everyone, it's Forys or Dave here. Welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be going back over the best OBS settings now in 2018 uh, for you guys to record your gameplays using, as I said, OBS 20.1.3. It's the latest version uh, that's out at the moment and uh, there's a couple new features in here. Uh, I've had a bit more of an idea of settings as we go along. I do like to make these videos as I think OBS is one of, if not the best, multi-purpose recording and streaming software right now to be using uh, for PC. So what we're going to do to start off with is you're going to get OBS from the internet. You're going to go onto, onto the website in the description, download the software, and when you install it, make sure you go into uh, your you're going to start menu, go to OBS, click OBS, and then we have OBS Studio 64-bit and OBS Studio 32-bit. Make sure you select the 64-bit one. I'd be very, very, very surprised if anyone out there is running 32-bit systems now um because they i mean they can't run the 64-bit version but it's almost certain that you are running a 64-bit system if you have a 30 if you have a 32-bit system and you're trying to record it you're gonna struggle so try and get an upgrade to your system but yeah click obs studio 64-bit and you'll be greeted with this software another thing uh and i'll explain why i want to do this in a bit because i've had a lot of people in my previous videos uh about around obs asking about this um is you want to right click here go to properties go to compatibility and then run this program in compatibility mode for Windows 7. Tick this, select Windows 7 and also run the program as an admin automatically. What this will do, and I'll explain it actually right now, is that when we want to add a source, so when we want to add some gameplay, uh, sometimes when you add the gameplay in, it will just remain black here, even though you're playing and you'll have the sound, but you won't have any it won't show up and it won't hook into the game. Essentially, it's because you need admin rights sometimes for some games and it's a bit of a pain. So make sure you've done all that, which I just said. Then when you come into the software, this is actually what you'll get. This is a fresh version of the software that I've set up so that all the settings are as you will see it if you've just downloaded the software. Uh, for scenes, we don't need to worry about them too much. That's really for streaming, not really that important for recording unless you want multiple different setups and different camera positions for different games you're playing. Uh, all I'm going to do is just put your gameplay. So what we're going to do is right click here, go to add and then go to game capture. Click OK and then you'll be greeted with this screen. Make sure the mode is set to capture specific window. And then with your game open, I don't have a game open at the moment. I could have had one open to show you, but uh, you click here on the window tab and then make sure you have the window selected. Uh, and then the game should appear up. If it still doesn't, um, then uh, just keep trying to kind of alt tab in and out of the game and eventually it should appear. Uh, just for this tutorial though, I'm going to get rid of the game capture. You can just click it and delete it. I'm going to go to add, I'm going to add a display capture instead, just so you can see something in the background. Uh, I'm actually going to select the second monitor I have so that it doesn't show my OBS screen. And there you go. You have now something which you can move around the screen. You can make it bigger or smaller. You can kind of do whatever you want with it. Uh, it's it's pretty good. It's, it's really, really nice and multifunctional. Uh, there you go. You've got something on your screen ready to record. Not anything that interesting, just I can move my mouse around over here. Okay, let's jump into the settings now, the kind of the meat of the tutorial. And I want to get through this decently quickly while explaining as much as I can, um, because I spent ages when I was trying to record this earlier and then realized the video was like half an hour long. So I definitely want to cut it down a little bit. Anyway, select settings. In general, the first thing I recommend doing, and I mean, it doesn't actually matter too much, but I changed the theme to dark. I just think everything's that much easier to see because the text is, you've got the white text against the black background. It's its just better. It looks nicer. It it looks, I guess, I guess it looks better with my kind of setup as well. Um, but yeah, not not that important. Just select whichever theme you want, either default, dark or rachne, which is actually quite nice. This kind of bluey looking setting. I might change this at some point. For now, we'll stay on dark. Everything else in here doesn't really need to be ticked. I just think it's fine how it is. Stream, doesn't matter. We're not streaming. Output. We're on simple mode right now. I don't like simple mode. I think it's it doesn't give you the the access to the all the good settings that you can actually use to become a power user in this software. So change output mode from simple to advanced. Ignore streaming. We don't need it right now. And go to recording. Recording path is going to be the first thing you can select. Well, actually, technically type you can select, but just leave that on standard. Recording path. If you have multiple hard drives that are decently fast. Record to a separate hard drive. So right now I've got this set as my C drive. I'm going to change this to my... Da, 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 where do I want to put it to? Uh, da, 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 go to my PC. I'm going to record it to my third hard drive. Just select the folder here. That's fine. Uh, recording to a separate hard drive will give you better performance because you've not got as many read and writes. So reading and writing off of a single hard drive, you're spreading it out. So... 
if you are really dedicated in, into recording, I think an upgrade to a hard drive or adding another hard drive is a really cheap way of getting some extra performance. Um, so look for some hard, look for a hard drive, one you can fit into your PC, just get like a terabyte one and just put all your recordings on there. You will benefit greatly from it. If you want to look it up, go, go read it, some, go read about it somewhere else because having a second hard drive or a third hard drive like I do uh, is useful. Recording format, you've got two options here, which I would recommend MP4 and MKV. There's advantages and disadvantages to both. Essentially, the advantage of MP4 over MKV is that it's instantly compatible with all different uh, editing softwares, at least the ones that I use, which are Premiere Pro and Vegas Pro sometimes. Um, you can just instantly drop the files in there and they'll just work like a dream. It's really, really nice. Uh, whilst MKV doesn't, oh, not TS, MKV will not uh, go straight in. You'll have to remux the recording, which you can do by uh, going to file and then clicking remux recordings and dragging in your file. Uh, the advantage to MKV though, is that if you have any crashes in your system, for example, blue screen of death, power cuts, or just any random crashes you're experiencing, uh, you will actually keep your file if you're recording to MKV. It will be usable. It will just cut the recording as if you stopped it there. If you are using MP4, however, your file's gone. It will just be corrupted. You won't be able to open it. And it can be really annoying. I have never had my PC crash on me whilst recording. So I just do MP4. And that's why I'd recommend to start off with. Uh, if you start having crashes or something or just things start going wrong and you want to be safer, do MKV. They both allow you to use multiple tr audio tracks and they both are the same quality. It's just the MKV. You'll have to remux the recording before you can drop it into an editing software. So see what you need for yourself and go with that. MP4 or MKV. Audio tracks. Uh, typically, depending on what you're doing, you will have, you pick the audio tracks you need. If you're just recording gameplay for, a, like, I don't know, maybe you make a montage or something, um, then just one audio track is all you need. If you're doing commentaries and stuff, uh, you can do two audio tracks. Um, if you're like me and you have extra software to split your uh, kind of TeamSpeak or Skype or Discord audio from your gameplay, then you can have three tracks. For this tutorial, I'm just going to do two. One for the gameplay and basically all your computer sounds and one for your mic. That's all you'll really need if you're starting off. So that's what we'll go with. Encoder. You've got three options here. NVENC, which is a encoder using your NVIDIA GPU. If you don't have an NVIDIA GPU, but you have a... Um, uh, an, an AMD GPU, you'll have a different option here. Um, essentially, you want to pick whichever one you have, so either NVENC or the AMD version. QuickSync is using the internal graphics, which can sometimes be good, but I wouldn't recommend it right now. And X264, I wouldn't recommend for recording because it uses a lot of your CPU power to record. Um, and if you don't have a beastly CPU, you just lose out. Essentially, the advantage of two X264 over NVENC um, is typically seen in streaming because you get much more quality out of lower bit rates for X264 than you would have NVENC. NVENC requires a much higher bit rate to obtain the same quality and in streams you want to have a lower bit rate so it's easier to output the uh the stream over the internet because if you if you have the bit rate too high it just won't output properly and people won't be able to watch it but for, for recording we can have a really high bit rate so we'll choose nvenc or amd um the amd sync should be similar to this so you can hopefully follow along if so in the settings we have uh, a bunch of different things that we can change which will Decide how the video is going to look. This, these are some of the most important settings of actual quality of what the video is going to look like. So I'm going to quickly run through what I use. If you've ever seen people use other things, um, I can quickly just run over them as well. Uh, essentially, I would choose CBR and I would start off with a bitrate of either 40,000 or oh, not that. 50,000. Um, higher bitrate means more quality. Try both of these out, see what works best for you. If you can happily do 50,000, then you just do 50,000. I wouldn't go higher than that. This is what Shadow Play records at, so you don't really need to go higher than that unless you're some sort of quality freak. <laughs> when you upload to YouTube anyway, you lose loads of quality, so it's fine. Uh, just set it at 50,000 or 40,000, depending on what you, you feel like. I'll put it at 50,000. Um, VBI I would never use, and Lossless I would never use. Uh, CQP is another option. Uh, essentially, this will keep the quality the same throughout and vary the bit rate to maintain that quality. So, for example, if I was to set this at 20, the lower the value is actually the, the better the quality, um, then I think 20 is a pretty good good option. Um, having, having this set would mean that in a 
in a fast moving game like an fps or something uh the actual ending file size would be bigger than in a slow moving game because it would need a higher bit rate to maintain the same quality hopefully that you meant that makes sense to you but anyway we're going to stick on 50,000 cbr because that just seems to work and youtube likes to compress the crap out of everything you put on it anyway so it's fine to just uh, have it as this because uh, it'll get crushed anyway keyframe interval leave this as zero doesn't you don't need to understand what this means preset i actually leave on default if you are as i said a kind of quality nerd or whatever <laughs> it's a weird way of putting it then you can put this on high quality it makes a slight difference but really not much it's, you can't really see it profile uh put this on high uh this is what you want to use for um high definition video uh level leave this on auto uh two pass encoding you can tick or untick this just trial and error i don't really see much difference i just leave it ticked because it's automatically ticked and technically it should increase the the quality but it should also use more power on your cpu but it doesn't seem to do that so not really sure it doesn't seem to have much place here and then gpu and b frames leave them as default next we're going to go to audio turn all of these tracks up to 320 audio is key and bad audio makes videos really bad uh, even if you're not using all six, you may as well turn them all up to, oh, these two didn't change. You may as well turn them all up because honestly, like if you ever, for some reason use track six and you've just forgot to change it, you don't want to be like, damn it. I didn't change it to 320, Put these on 320. You're going to get the best quality audio. Next, we're going to go to the audio tab. Uh, make sure you set your sample rate to 48 kilohertz. Uh, next we're going to go to the desktop audio device and you can usually leave this as default. Uh, it will typically just be what your speakers are. For me, I have to set it as a specific thing, so I'm just gonna do that for you, um, which is, I think, I kind of forgot, but I think it's this one. Um, uh, leave the desktop audio two disabled. Uh, your mic, you can select your mic. Now this one doesn't normally select the right one for me, so I have to make sure I produce uh, my producer USB. And there you go, you've got your uh, mic and desktop audio, desktop audio, as I trip up on my words, set up. Next is the video tab. Now. In this day and age, I think you should be really aiming for 1080p uh, for all your videos. And ideally, I think 60 FPS. So ideally set, make sure you set the base canvas resolution to your resolution of your monitor or the resolution you're playing at. Um, so for most people these days, it will be 1080p. Some people might be, you know, up to 4K, uh, which could be the case. But for me, it's 1080p. If you want to go down to 720p, you can, but make sure you do it in this output scaled resolution and not back in here where it says rescale output. Do it in here. It's better. I can't really explain why, but it is. Uh, so you can set it here as 720p. But I'm going to leave it as 1920 by 1080. Uh, downscale filter, it's just fine leaving it by cubic. Uh, hotkeys, you can set up a hotkey to start and stop recording. I don't need to use that. Um, it's typically better for streamers uh, who set, can set hotkeys to like switch between stuff and start scenes and stop scenes. It's not as useful for us people who are just trying to record. And then advanced is the last page. And some people might just leave this as is. You normally actually just can. Um, if you want to make sure that your recordings don't fail on you and you have enough uh, kind of breathing room uh, to turn this up, you can turn the process priority up a little bit. What this will mean is that the if there's any... Um, a kind of bottlenecking happening or you reach 100% of your CPU being used, uh, this software will get priority over your game. Now, what you might think this isn't a good thing, but honestly, if you're running your game and your game suffers a little bit of FPS, your recording will still be smooth enough and it'll be fine. If your recording software starts failing, you, you can start losing frames and your recording can be absolutely ruined. So I actually do recommend to put this on above normal for recording. Render or leave it as direct. 3d 11 and color format leave it as mv12 color space i turn up to 709 and color range you can kind of try both these out do some test recordings of both of these i like what partial looks like um, i feel like full it gives more color but it makes everything a lot darker so i keep on partial but definitely try them both out and then everything else here isn't necessary and then click apply last thing we're going to do is show you how to set up the mixer so down here we have our audio you can see me speaking and coming through the mic and my desktop audio nothing's playing if you click the cog wheel here and go to advanced audio properties you will have this screen come up you can choose the volume here you can uh, set up a sync offset so if, if for example you were recording uh, through like an elgato uh, capture card that might have a bit of a delay on it 
um, as it comes through, so you can set like your your mic to come through later. I don't need to do that because I'm recording just PC games. Uh, and then the tracks as well is the next thing that are important, which are basically which track we're going to output to. So right now we we'd only selected track one and two to be outputted, but right now the mic and the desktop are being outputted to just all the tracks. We want to split these, so let's just tick off everything above three because we're not using them and then let's tick only two for the mic and tick only one for the desktop therefore when we do a recording the desktop audio will appear on track one and the mic audio will appear on track two simple that's the best way i found to do it and this will allow you to actually play around with your audio and uh, you know just have your mic do some effects in your mic later on set the levels better and that way you don't need to adjust your levels here you don't need to make the desktop audio quieter because your game's too loud you can just do it in your editing later anyway i think that's everything we need to go over here so i hope you've enjoyed this video after all this you literally just click start recording by the way if you hadn't figured out and then it will record and then you'll have your gameplays recorded um i honestly think this is the best way to be recording right now if you have any issues uh you can use still use shadow play i still think it's a really good bit of software and it's actually getting a lot better over time uh, i'm slowly starting to use it a lot more um seeing if it might be a better alternative but i still think obs overall whether you're recording or streaming is going to be your best option so thanks very much for watching and i will catch you guys in my next video make sure as i said you leave a like uh, leave a comment below if you have any questions and i'll try to respond to them as quickly as possible as well thanks for watching and goodbye